And so here we are, on the flip side of you, or someone you know, probably taking the fall 2021 AMC 10A, maybe it was the 12A. We're gonna get to problem one in just a moment. I did wanna give a quick shout out to C Eyewear in Glendale. I picked up these in the summertime. I try to find glasses that are a little bit different, maybe trendy, stylish, hip, whatever you wanna call it. Something that's kind of not like what everyone else has. And I found these there. I looked at like several different places and these were the best, the best store that I found that had a lot of selection of, I don't know, it's kind of quirky, interesting, different kind of glasses. Um, like I would say stylish is probably the best word. They also had great customer service and they're not paying me to say this. I just thought it was a great place to go. So if you're in the market for new glasses in the near future, check them out. All right, so let's get started then. Problem number one, what is the value of this? Don't spend a lot of time being too crazy. Just look at it and figure it out. I don't like to subtract, I like to add. Why adding? Because it's faster. If you add 79 to this, you'll get 2100. Add 12 more to get 91. It's 91 squared, which is 13 squared times seven squared, because 91 is 13 times seven. Dividing by 13 squared to cancel will get you 49. It is really important that you go through early or trivial type questions as quickly as possible without making a mistake, of course, because the later questions then take a lot more thought and effort to come up with. You'll have more time to think about. Uh, let's get on to problem number two. So continuing on, we are on to the fall 2021 10A problem two, also the 12A problem two. There were a lot of the same questions between the two tests and the first 10, I think like seven or something like that. I don't know, we'll see. Menkara has a four by six index card. If she shortens the length of one side of this card by one inch, the card would have area 18 square inches. Let's think about that. If you took an inch off of this dimension, it'd be four by five, that's not it. Must've been the other one, three by six would be 18. So you would get the 18 that they got. Let's keep reading. I like to process as I read, not read the whole thing. What would the area of the card be if instead she shortens the length of the other side by one inch? We already did that. That's the four by five. That's gonna be 20. That's the answer. Let's get on to problem three. And now the first problem that was different on the two tests, this is the 2021 AMC 10A problem three. What is the maximum number of balls of clay with radius two that can completely fit inside a cube of side length six. Okay, so hold on. Cube of side length six, 216. That's the volume of the cube, right? Six to the third power. Um, okay, notice they don't give dimensions like inches, centimeters, nobody cares, right? Assuming the balls can be reshaped, but not compressed. What does that mean? If you can't, how do you, compressed means shrunk down in size. So like they're a different size, like that you, you know, like density kind of thing. So you can enclose it in kind of like ice is different from water or something. I don't know. Sand can be compressed to a smaller size than it was before. You can't do that. So whatever the volume is of one ball, that's the same exact volume it will take up inside the cube, but you can shape it into something different, like little squares or something else to try to fit it inside or anything actually, it doesn't really matter. So uh, I actually took a little bit of time on this one as well. Um, so if you guys had difficulty on this, I mean, not too much time for me, but at the same time, it was more than I would have expected on a number three. The main mistake that I made is I originally thought the balls were pi r squared. <laughs> Maybe you guys did that too. And then I woke up like a little bit later, somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute before I figured out why it wasn't working right. Suddenly we should be getting a lot more than seven. And that's because that's not the formula for volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So now we drop this two in here, eight times four is 32 pi over three. That's the volume of one ball. Well, it makes sense that you can reshape it into whatever form you want. You just gotta divide this by that and the number of times it goes in rounded down, because uh, you wouldn't be able to fit a whole ball up to like wherever it's at, that will be the answer. So let's do that, 216 divided by this is times the reciprocal. So you have times three over 32. I'm gonna make it eight times four pi. Why have I done that? Because 216 is six cubed. We saw this earlier in problem one, similar thinking, two cubed times three cubed, right? 
that's not quite the same thing, but we broke up a number into its prime bases. And so you're going to have 2 cubed, which is 8 here. That's going to cancel and leave you 27. So you're going to get 81 divided by 4 pi. Um, now, let's just kind of try to use the answers at this point. We don't really want to go 3.14, although we could. I mean, it's not even, that's not pi's value. It's a decent approximation. I mean, if 22 over 7, which is another approximation for pi, play to benefit or pay to benefit, I guess, uh, then I would probably use it, but it doesn't really do that either. 3.14 is going to give you 81 over 12.56, mostly because 4 times 14 is 56, 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, so how many times will this go in? It definitely goes in at least 6. Even if this was a 13, 6 times 13 is 78. So it's not up to 13 yet, but 78 would be definitely allow you to fit six of them in there. So this is going to be greater than six. You have more. You could fit at least six in there. The question is, could you fit seven? If you do seven times 12 alone, it's 84. That's too many. You don't have enough for seven. The answer is going to be six. Um, you don't want to do like full calculations like 12.56 and you don't have time for that. Being able to quickly estimate small values and things like that to get an idea to quickly get to one of the multiple choice answers is where it's at. Let's get to problem four. All right, and now we are on the 2021 fall AMC 10A problem four. It was also the 12A problem three. Mr. Lopez has a choice of two routes to get to work. Route A is six miles long and his average speed stop. Why are we stopping? Let's start making sense of what we're reading. Don't read maybe the whole paragraph, just start making sense of it. You should know what we're doing. We're doing rate times time equals distance. This is like a staple of the competition and just math in general. So rate times time equals distance. Um, if he goes route A, it's a six mile route and his average speed is 30 miles per hour. So we're gonna put 30 here and six here, immediately take this and divide by that. You can do time equals distance over rate. You're gonna get one fifth. Okay, but what is that? Well, time, remember the most important thing for rate time distance is that the time in units has to match the unit of the, of the rate, right? So this is miles per hour. This is one fifth hours, okay? So next up, route B is five miles long and his average speed, you might wanna put B and five, but hold up just a second. And his average speed along this route is 40 miles per hour, except for a half mile stretch in a school zone where his average speed is 20 miles per hour. Good, okay, so let's do B and then we'll call E the exception. So if it's a five mile stretch and he travels one rate except for this half mile, it's going to be 4.5 miles at the rate of 40 per hour. And the exception is 0.5 at the rate of 20. So we're looking for by how many minutes is root B quicker? Root B is basically this combined. What is one fifth of an hour? It's 12 minutes, 60 over five is 12. So A is 12 minutes. Okay, what is B going to be combined with E basically? Uh, you might, do you think 4.5 over 40 is fun? Probably not. And when you feel that lack of enjoyment coming from your calculation, it's a sign you should probably do it differently. So it's not that I know to change this into a fraction, it's that I really don't want to do it with the decimal. Um, so I'm just going to make it a 9 over 2 over 40, which is 9 over 80. 9 over 80 because this is 9 over 2 when you divide by an integer it's the same as multiplying the denominator now that's not nice in terms of minutes but I'm over it okay then 1 half divided by 20 is 1 over 40 but we're gonna make it 2 over 80 so that it plays well with the other value because we're gonna add those together it's gonna take 11 over 80 hours Again, you're adding those together. We're gonna to multiply that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Um, you're kind of doing a, a unit conversion or a conversion factor if you don't know. And then this is hours, right? And so the hours cancels the hours. It leaves you with the minutes. So 60 over 80 is 3 fourths. That's 33 over four minutes. How am I getting 33? It's the calculation of 20 goes into here three times, times 11, 33, 
and then 20 goes into here four times. So uh, B is faster. We just need to take this, convert it into something over four. That's going to be 48 over four. Subtract 15 over four equals three and three fourths, three and three fourths minutes faster on root B than root A. Let's get to problem number five or four if we're doing the 12. And so the last problem of the 10A first five rapid fire is this problem. It's only the fourth problem for the 12A. We'll do that one in a moment. So uh, the six digit number 20210A is prime for only one digit A. What is A? Well, it needs to be prime. Prime numbers only have two divisors, one and itself. Um, they have to be unique. One is not a prime number. But that doesn't matter here. So A cannot be even because even numbers are all divisible by two. Um, the only even prime being the number two. So what do we do? Uh, you should know your divisibility rules, right? I mean, early ones, especially less than maybe 11 and below, you should know how to evaluate if a number is divisible by those. So for example, if it ends in five, it's divisible by five. These are concepts we learn in AOPS pre-algebra even, and yet you're getting one of these on your AMC 10 and 12. Hopefully you guys flew through this one, and if you didn't, lessons learned, we need to know our divisibility rules. So what's next? I think about easy divisibility rules. If it's a multiple of three, the sum of the digits is a multiple of three. So let's add up all the digits. Two plus two plus one is five plus A. Now, if A is one, four, or seven, all such results will be multiples of three, right? Five plus one being six, nine, and 12. Since the sum is a multiple of three, so is the original number. Now of these, one and seven are odds, so they are out because those numbers would be divisible by three and hence not a prime number. Okay, so then what about three or nine? We're down to these ones. Well, we've already exhausted three and five. Divisibility by seven is kind of hard to check. You might as well just do the division and I don't really want to do that, but we know a cool trick for 11. And if you didn't know this one, you should, and maybe add it to your small notebook if you weren't aware of it before. Now, you want to do every other digit, add up all of those. So two, two, and zero. Two plus two plus zero equals four. And then the other digits that you didn't include the first time. Zero plus one plus A, which I'm just going to write as one plus A. Now, if the difference in these two calculations is a multiple of 11, including zero, because zero is 11 times zero, um, or it could be 11, it can even be negative. Now we're not gonna have 11 or negative 11 here because it's just too big, a, too big of a difference for us to get, but we can easily get a difference of zero. And if you get a difference that's a multiple of 11 with the two alternating digit sums, it is divisible by 11 and hence not prime. As you can see, if A takes on the value of three, this is four, the difference being zero, that means it's not three, and we only have one answer left. So it's gotta be that by process of elimination. You really don't wanna check that to see if it's prime, trust me. And you're just gonna have to ride with it and hope you didn't make a mistake in your reasoning here. So be careful with the reasoning that you did. We are on to the next problem or the next set of five if you're following the 10A.